What's up guys, I'm bringing you guys another video here today and in today's video I'm actually redoing one of my videos that I did previously. It did not turn out too well because of the um, YouTube process or whatever because um, when I re-watched it, it looked fine to me but once it was uploaded to YouTube, it re-encoded my video so it could be changed in different quality settings that YouTube has. So once it dropped below a certain frames per second, it did not render out the video, resulting into a black screen. But in today's video, I'm actually redoing that video for you guys here today, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So basically, this whole video is going to be a redo video like I said, but I'm showing you guys how to do an update system for your guys' programs. Now, I'm starting a new project here, I just named it Update System. Um, Two things you're going to need is basically a program that you already made or when you're making a new program and a web server to upload your uh, file. So you are going to need a version.txt or whatever you name it. But uh, I'm going to open up my file Zilla. You guys can use whatever you use to upload your files but I'm going to connect to my web host and do that right now. Um, I think I already have a file up there or uploaded to it from the last video but I think it's YouTube Tuts yeah, right here and I'm just gonna drag this into here and it should automatically update it I'll just replace it so now once we view and edit this is what's inside the file 1.0.0.0 now we can just minimize this and go back into the update system now I'm not going to make anything fancy for this. Um, hopefully you guys already have a program made or you know, make your program if you haven't made it already. But this, I'm just going to show you guys how to make an update system. So you know, I'm just going to add a simple button, check for updates, and then we're also going to add a few labels to show you guys what version it actually is. So these, but or these labels will be just called null because we don't have the values of those right now, and this will be the current version. Well, let me put semicolon there. So current version, and this one is called server version. So this number will be what's on the server, and this is what's current. So right now we are going into the. Um, form load um, we need to import a few things before we get started so imports system.io system.net and system uh, dot web I believe yeah system dot web now the first thing is first we need to create a public sub you can create a uh, private sub but public sub is better because then in other forms you can call this sub from form 1 or whatever form you're calling it from so public sub um, you know check for updates it's simple as that now once we go into the button we can type in check for updates so whenever we click whenever we click this uh, button it'll check the updates for us so it'll run whatever's in here. So if you get what I'm saying, we're going to create a update system in this uh, sub right here. But uh, since we're calling check for updates from the button click, we are clicking, basically checking every time we click that button. But on the form load, we are going to also um, figure out some other stuff as well, like the uh, application version number. So let's find out what that is. So current is label 3. So label 3.txt equals application.product version. So when we start this up right now, the first number should be 1.0.0.0, and the second one should be just null because we still do not know the version of the web version or whatever, whatnot. So as you guys can see, it actually started on my other screen. Let me pull it over here. So right here it says, 
current is 1.0.0.0 and the server is null so it doesn't do anything right now so the next thing we have to do is basically write the code for the check for update um so basically let's do that now so we're going to do it all in a try statement so if we if it fails it you can like show a warning or you know something else like that along those lines so we're going to dim a request if i can spell request it doesn't matter what you say right here you can just say dim r but I'll say dim request as system dot i or dot not not dot io but uh, dot net dot http web request whoops I accidentally clicked enter equals system dot net dot http uh, web web request okay it's not auto completing for me which is very irritating dot create and then inside this we want to get the link to our file so we can still do that we just have to right click here and copy to clipboard and then paste it into here and then get rid of some of this stuff because we don't want to go into there and we want to just have HTTP semicolon slash slash. So that's the location of my file. So the first things first, we're requesting to this file, which I need to edit this. I don't know why I didn't auto correct that. Um, but yeah, basically we are going to this link and requesting the information from it. So the next thing we have to do is get the response. So dim response as system dot net dot http oh my gosh http uh, web response let's see I think it's just equal to response dot web or no wait get response sorry guys get response no am I doing something wrong equals request dot get response there we go I don't know why that wasn't working and then now we want to dim a stream reader so sr as stream or er, First, you have to declare it as system dot io dot stream reader equal to the new system dot io dot stream reader, and then we're reading the response of the stream. And then the next thing we have to do is dim newest version as string equal to the sr dot read to to end so basically we're reading the file and declaring it as newest version and then we can also dim current version as string equals to application dot product version so basically the same thing we did here so actually we can just do these well we can't do them outside of the this try statement because then we it would just be messed up but uh the first thing or the second thing we have to do is okay well let me explain this so we're requesting this file we're declaring a response and then we're reading the response into this uh the newest version and then current version we declared that as the application.product version now we have to go back to here and see the current version which is label 3 and label 4 is the server version so label 3 dot text equals current current version dot to string and then label 4 dot text equals newest version dot to string 
So basically these are numbers, but we're, we're I declared them as a string just to make it easier because up here also we are declaring everything as a string. Um, even though that they're numbers, but they're still considered as a, as a string. But uh, the next thing we have to do, so basically this finds the file that we need to read, it reads it, gets the response as the newest version, we declare current version as the product version, and then we print those strings onto the labels, and now we're going to compare um, the uh, two labels, and if they're different, it's going to update. So hopefully you guys understand what I'm doing. I'm trying to explain it as best as possible, but here we go. So if, and it's going to auto fill a bunch of crap, I hate this. I don't even know what extension or plugin it's doing this, but it's annoying. So if label um, four dot text is greater than label three dot text, then it'll do an update. So we can just do like a message box dot show and be like update are needed and then we can just do update whoops I forgot the parentheses or er, quotations I can't spell with crap guys I'm sorry so let's run this right now it's basically done um so it started on the other screen oh wait I forgot to show, uh, show you guys how to wait newest version Okay, I made a mistake, and that was kind of, um, you know, ex expected. I, oh, I didn't make a mistake. I'm so dumb. Sorry, guys. Um, this is correct. I didn't do this for when it form loads, but when you click it, it's version 1.0. Okay, so we got that corrected. So now I'll show you guys that it'll pop up a message box showing you that uh, the update system works. So let me get this out of the way. So let's go into here and let's just, you know, edit it to 1.1. And we'll click save, drag it back in here. So now this will be uploaded to the web server. I'm going to go back into my update system, click start. It started on the right but as you guys can see like I said you gotta click check for updates there is ways that you can do it to on form load but um, I'm just showing you guys how to do it with a button um, but yeah so when you click it it'll say updates are needed and you click OK and then you can start the update process if you would like so in here you can do like so if this message box is true it'll pop this up and then as soon as you click OK you can do like um, my doc computer dot download or however you download a file I, I don't know what it is right off the top of my head but uh yeah um just to let you guys know I have tell uh self taught myself everything I haven't actually gone to school for this so some of the stuff I don't know exactly right off the top of my head but that this video is trying to explain to you guys exactly how to make an update system which I just told you guys um but yeah, you guys can edit it the way, however way you want. This basically just reads a file and checks it with the current version of your application. Um, there's so many different ways that you can implement this into programs and other ways to check stuff and all these other things. But this is how I showed you guys. If you have any questions or any other tutorials you want me to, you know, make, I can do that. And remember, guys, this was a video that I had to redo because of the uh, YouTube, um, like encoder thing my video was dropping frames like crazy and it didn't render it out on YouTube but anyways guys I hope you enjoyed um but oh yeah one more thing you guys are probably thinking well I know how to change my version for the server and it knows what version is on, on there but if you guys don't know how to change your version for your program just go up to project and then go to um it'll say like whatever your um program's called mine's called update system so like you know, I have another program called Raven Security, so it'll say Raven Security Properties, whatever, whatever the program name it is. But you go into here and go to Assembly Information, and then you want to change these to the same number. So this web server number is 1.1.1, 1 
So we'll click OK and we will rebuild the program and we'll start it again. Now when we click check for updates it'll just say the server is also that. See the current is the same so there's actually no updates. But like I said you can go back into here and we can just edit it through the program like this. And I'll change this to 2. Click save and click that. And we can click check for updates again and now it'll say the server is 1.2 and updates are needed and then once you click OK whatever process you have for downloading your new file or your new installer you guys can do it that way but anyways guys this video has already been 15 minutes and I hope it turns out well and if it does please leave a like on it um, that would help me out a lot and if you guys haven't already please subscribe um, you guys will that, that would be awesome but I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later in another video peace